Now I'm back inside and um, I've removed these two spaces now. So we need to calculate how big the spaces need to be. Sorry, how big the spaces or how thick the spaces need to be for proper infinity. So I've removed them and with the tape that I used still on, um, including the piece that I used to attach to the actual camera body, I measured the thickness of both of them. And um, one was 20.2 millimeters uh, thickness and one was 20.3. Now, because they're different, I decided to take the average. So that's 20.25 millimeters. And that's just for the spaces that I have. So from the ground glass plane, to the actual metal um, film gate here is needs to be 20.25 millimeters in the final product. Now, if you have your Polaroid back, um, you can see I've mounted a film pack in here. I haven't actually removed the black um, light paper stuff here. So um, you can see that the actual film plane here, which I'm going to assume is this black piece here, is kind of set into the pack by a certain amount and I measured that distance because this this area here will be the area sitting against the spacer and because our ground glass was actually flush against the spacer this we need to take into the account this depth here so I measured this depth and it came out to be 20, uh, 2.3 millimeters so um, we need to subtract 2.3 millimeters from our spaces that we just calculated which was 20.25 minus 2.3 and that will give you 18.05 millimeters uh, the 0 0.05 millimeters is you're probably not even going to be able to work to that kind of tolerance unless you have a milling machine or something so I'm, I'm just going to say 18 millimeters roughly and so uh, that's going to be the final spacer thickness and once this mounts on there, this will provide the extra 2.3 millimeters, and that will boost it up to our 20.25 millimeters that we had. And so, yeah, we just need to get these spaces to the right thickness now. Um, you can use anything for the spaces, as long as it's um, stable and solid. And basically, you don't want to use anything too soft or something that kind of let's light through. So I thought wood is a good um, uh, a good material because um, once it's laminated together it's, it's pretty stable. It's dimensionally stable and it's easy to work. Um, it's, it doesn't let light through obviously, well they shouldn't do. And it just looks nice and it's also light. You can use plastics, uh, metal if you have a, a milling machine or anything. Um, and you can also design it to be any kind of way you like. I'm going to be using these strips just because um, these are conveniently, I found these conveniently at my hardware store and five millimeters thickness each as I said so they're kind of nicely milled for me and all I have to do is just cut them to length and stick them there and kind of create a frame. Um, you can have alternate ways to do it. You can get like a, a sheet of plywood which is you know the right thickness and then you can cut a square hole out of it and stick that on do the same with plastic or whatever. Um, it's kind of up to you but I thought you know strips were easier to work and yeah they're, they're nice. These these are actually uh, Japanese cherry uh, sakura. Um, these were kind of cheap so I bought them and it's nice. Um, I actually thought about using plywood because it is very stable and very strong obviously but I didn't really want to kind of cut a hole out of the middle of a, a sheet just because it takes too much time and it's probably not going to look very nice uh, the way I do it anyway so yeah just do this any way you want and once you have the spaces um, you can attach them here with epoxy or screws or anything, but uh, we'll get to that later.